Most pharmacy students go into pharmacy school with a job in mind and a goal in hand, whether that be they want to be a community pharmacist, a clinical pharmacist specialist in a specific area in the hospital. Maybe they want to be a professor or a medical science liaison working for industry. Doesn't really matter what it is, but most pharmacy students have some sort of goal that they are working towards. That's why they're in pharmacy school to have a job in mind. And while this is great, I'm doing a video today about when those plans change or that ultimate job prospect just doesn't work out. And I'm doing this today from my own experience because I did not come into pharmacy school with the idea that I was going to be an investigational drug service pharmacist. In fact, at no point was that ever a goal of mine, but here I am and I'm actually enjoying the position. So I'm going to be sharing some things that happened to me along the way, what my goals were, how they changed what rejections I had along the way. And this is a very open and honest conversation that I don't feel like gets had often enough. So back when I was in pharmacy school, I really wanted to be a NICU clinical pharmacist specialist. Like that was the goal. I was interning at a women's and children's hospital and I absolutely loved it. And I had done a rotation in my fourth year in the neonatal ICU and absolutely fell in love with taking care of neonatal patients. And I can tell you even to this day, they are my favorite population to work with. They are just so unique. And I can't really put it into words on why I love it so much other than the fact that when a neonatal patient left, you knew that they had their entire life ahead of them. And without some sort of intervention from the medical team, we would not have seen that patient ever leave the hospital. They wouldn't be alive and get to live this full life, which was really cool to me. I thought that was just so awesome to be able to do that. And neonatal patients pose a lot of challenges from a medication standpoint, and I just wanted to work with them. So when I was looking at residency programs, I was looking at programs that really were going to give me great NICU experience, where I was going to be able to understand you nutrition for neonatal patients, because that was one of my favorite parts of my NICU rotation as a student was getting to do the TPNs or total parental nutrition orders for those patients. That was really exciting and fun to me. I really liked nutrition. So that was a goal of mine and just larger NICU settings where I was going to get an opportunity to work with a lot of neonatal patients. And in my search, I found that dream residency program, that one that you are just like, wow, like if I get to go here, I'm going to reach my goals. This is it. And I started applying, interviewing for residency with this place in mind. I knew that this is like where I wanted to be. This was going to work for me. And that is what was in my head the whole time. And I actually did get an interview at my top program. And so when I went in to rank them, they had met all of my expectations and then some in the interview. And I was like, this is still my top choice. Like going into the interview process, it was my top choice. Coming out of the interview process, it was my top choice. And I was just like so excited, like this is it. By the way, if you're somebody who's going to be going through residency and you would like to hear the things that I did well and did wrong in my interviews and what I've learned being on the other side of interviews now, I do have an interview masterclass for residency. I will link it down in the show notes below, or you can DM me on Instagram. Just DM me the words residency interview, and I will send you a link to that. But back to the story. So on match day, I opened that match day email and the name that I matched with was not my top choice. And I cried. I was just really upset and I knew it was a possibility that I wouldn't get my first choice. I hear people do that all the time and I hear it's okay. But that day that you hear that you didn't get the top choice, that dream residency, it sucks. Even though I knew the program that I was matching at was still going to give me great opportunities that had a lot of NICU experience, I was just really devastated because this place that I had like hyped up in my head so much and had met and exceeded my expectations during the interview was not the place I was going to be. And it took a few hours, but I did come around and did end up getting a little bit more excited because honestly, the place that I matched with was going to give me great NICU experience and experiences outside of that. They were going to give me the experiences that I wanted from teaching and other things. So there was reason to be upset, yes, because it wasn't my top choice, but there were a lot of benefits to where I was going. The other thing was the program that I had matched at for my PGY-1 did have a pediatric PGY-2 that focused in critical care. So even though I was going somewhere else, I was going to have the opportunity if I wanted to stay on to specialize in critical care, which means I was going to be able to work with those neonatal ICU patients that I loved so much. Ultimately, that goal of NICU clinical pharmacist specialist was very much still on the table. It wasn't going away. And so once I came to terms with that, despite being terrified of the fact 
fact that I was going to move halfway across the country, I knew that I could still stay on the path that I had set for myself in pharmacy school. So fast forward to October of my residency year, and I had realized at that point that I didn't really like pediatric critical care in most settings. I'd worked in the ER. I absolutely did not like that. I liked the part where it was like pediatrics. I did not like traumas. I did not like codes. There are some of you out there that are ER junkies and you're like, that is my favorite part of being a pharmacist is like getting to be in that room. That was not for me, which means pick you also was not my favorite. I didn't like the sadness that went on there. A lot of the patients that came through the PICU didn't make it. We were doing a lot of organ donations. And while that is this mixed emotion of like happy and sad, I just knew that I was not going to be happy doing that for the rest of my career. I had also shadowed in the cardiac ICU and realized that I don't really like the heart, which I already knew that that was not my favorite organ. I had done a cardiology rotation for adults in my like pharmacy school experience. So I wasn't really surprised when I realized I wasn't really interested in that for pediatric patients either. But I still loved the NICU. I absolutely loved my NICU rotation. That is 100% true. I did a nutrition rotation where I was focused mostly in the NICU. Absolutely loved that as well. But when it came down to that decision of whether or not I was going to stay on for a PGY2 and focus in critical care, I realized that that was not for me. While I liked doing NICU, I could not see myself spending another year of residency doing mostly things that I didn't enjoy or were not things that I was interested in doing later on. The other part of that was I realized that it was going to be hard for me to specifically get a NICU position after I was done with residency. Like there was a possibility I could, but also would that be in a place that I was interested in living in? And so I realized how narrow that was going to make my job search And I just decided it wasn't for me. But I wasn't ready to give up the idea of a PGY2 yet. And I had recognized the fact that I really liked medication safety. I liked doing projects and more long-term work that maybe wasn't direct patient care. And I had seen that in myself enough, even before my med safety rotation, which was going to happen in January, that that was a path that I would be interested in. So I went to mid-year and did PPS, which is the Personnel Placement Service, and I was interviewing for PGY2s and medication safety. And I did many interviews. I talked to a lot of different programs, some of which were really going to get me closer to home. At that point in time, my husband and I were living about 10 hours apart. He was in Missouri still, and I was in Texas. And I just knew I did not want to do that long of distance for another year. It was too much. But as I interviewed, for these positions and I came back to Texas and I was thinking more and more about like what I wanted to do long term, I realized that maybe this med safety gig also wasn't for me. So after finally figuring out that PGY2 was not for me, I started looking at alternative options of what I wanted to do. At this point, I realized I did not want to be a staff pharmacist forever, that I could definitely do a staff pharmacist role and enjoy it for a while. But recognizing just the type of work that I like to do. I like a lot of project-based work, advocacy work. I actually enjoy going to meetings sometimes if it's one where I can collaborate with people and problem solve. And that's just not what a staff pharmacist does. I started looking for jobs that were going to not only meet my interest and goals, but also were going to work towards my strengths and the things I really enjoyed doing. As a student, I really enjoyed advocacy work and I had been recognized at several different levels for my advocacy for patients. And so I applied for a fellowship in association management. I was really excited about this decision. It felt right at the time. And then the pandemic hit. So like many, many others, when the pandemic hit, things changed in a lot of ways. And I had applied for this position before March. It was like, I think February is when I had to turn it in. And I just didn't hear back and didn't hear back. And I knew the contacts for the place that I was applying to for the fellowship. So I reached out and didn't hear back right away, which made me a little bit nervous. And then I finally got a phone call about the position. And it was somebody I had worked with and collaborated with as a student. So they knew me. And basically they told me, we voted for you to be the fellow for this year. However, because the pandemic happened, we're going to cut the position at least for this year because there's a lot of uncertainty and we don't know if we can support the position. 
So like, we're sorry. And if there's anything I do to help you, let me know, but you will not be our fellow for the next year. We're not going to have the position at all. And I kind of braced myself for that at this point, because it was like April or May and I hadn't heard for a while and I was supposed to hear back. So I wasn't shocked, but I was definitely disappointed because this fellowship position was going to get me close to my husband, give me things that I thought that I wanted in my career at that point in time. And I was working towards a goal that I had at one point in time thought about doing association management even before I had done a residency. It was another tough blow to get another kind of rejection and say, you know, this position isn't going to work out. So that connection I had from fellowship, I reached back out to her a couple weeks later because there was nothing on the job market when you're talking April or May of 2020. Like a lot of hospitals had just been on a hiring freeze. So unless there was a position open that they must fill, they weren't filling new positions. They weren't hiring that many people. They were bare bones staffing because nobody knew what was going on. So for anybody who's listening to this that also went through a job search at that time, you you know what I'm talking about. 2020 was rough when you're looking for jobs, even in healthcare, that early in the year. So I reached back out to that connection I had at the fellowship, and she put me in touch with somebody who was hiring in the area, but the position was definitely not what I was planning on doing long term. It was a community independent pharmacy, and it was going to be a job where there was like a mix of clinical work and staffing, but I decided to keep an open mind because it was the only job I'd heard of in the area that my husband was living in for a very long time. And so I flew from Texas to Missouri to interview for this job in mid-May. Keep in mind, I was graduating residency at the end of June. So I went and did this interview. It was like an all day long interview. And I was doing okay at first because the interview was being conducted in like a conference room next to the pharmacy. It wasn't in the pharmacy. But when I stepped behind that counter in the pharmacy, I knew in my gut, that I was not going to be happy there. I knew it just wasn't right for me. Like I had spent the last year of my life. And even before that, like in pharmacy school, I was focused on working with pediatric patients. That was my passion. That was the area that I loved. So when I actually stepped foot behind the counter and saw what my role would be at least most of the time at the beginning and would be taking care of not pediatric patients and not doing the things that I trained in residency, I'm going to be honest, I was a bit nauseous. I was just like, wait a second, this is this is not right. This is not where I belong. This is not what I've been working towards. And I think the owner knew it. I do not have a good poker face, guys. It's bad. I am very easy to read. And so he told me to think it over. So I talked to my husband that night and I was told him how I felt. And he was like, agreeing with me. No, you can't do this. This isn't right. Like, we'll make it work. If you come back and don't have a job yet, but you shouldn't take something that makes you feel that way. So I respectfully sent him a message and declined to move any further with that process. So at this point, it was like the third week in May and I flew from Missouri back to Texas. And at the time, I actually created one of my favorite YouTube videos that I've ever done, which was my trip like traveling during COVID. And it's pretty crazy. I'll leave it linked down below if you've never seen it before, just because it was interesting to even look back now a few years later and be like, wow, that was how we traveled then. Kind of crazy, but flew back and remained jobless, interviewless, and kind of without any prospects whatsoever for a few more weeks. So at the beginning of June, I heard from my past employer. This was working at a women's and children's hospital. That's where I had been an intern during pharmacy school. And I found out that they were going to be hiring. So the position hadn't opened yet, but they were like, it's coming. Once it opens, like, go ahead and apply and we'll interview you. So I waited a few days and was working on my application in the background, like the cover letter. I was working on my CV. I was trying to find who was going to be the people who would be like my recommendation letter writers if I needed that or just to fill out a you know reference form whatever it may be and so I was working on all those things that I needed in order to get a job which I had already like done some of that but when you're in residency you're adding stuff to your CV all the time so even in that time frame which was about a month between my last interview and then interviewing for this job I had added a couple presentations and projects and things so I added those to my CV and then when it opened I went ahead and applied and they did get an interview on my 
schedule pretty quickly. The plus side was I didn't have to go back to Missouri for the interview. They were doing virtual interviews because of the pandemic. And since I had already seen the facility, it wasn't a big deal that I wasn't going to get to see it before actually getting hired if that was going to happen. So I interviewed with my past coworkers. It was a night shift job. And I knew that's not something I wanted to do forever. But I knew that I really liked the people that I worked with. It was going to let me work with women and children. And even though night shift just was not my thing, it was better than being jobless or having to work in an area that was completely not what I trained for. So I moved back to Missouri from Texas and it was super freaking hot. It was like the day before July 4th and I was in a vehicle that had no air conditioning. It was one of the most miserable days of my life. I was like driving through Oklahoma and it was, there was like dust blowing in my car and I was sweating. It was sticking to me and I had to roll up the windows, but it was like over a hundred degrees and I turned like bright red whenever I get hot and I had stopped to get ice just to like put on me because I was so hot in my car and there was like a truck driver who I guess was a pastor too and he like asked if he could pray for me to get to my destination because he was concerned about me like that's how bad I was guys I was probably the sweatiest and grossest I've ever been in my life driving back from Texas. And so I made it back to Missouri with no job. And I waited a few weeks and I did hear back that I got the night shift position. While I was in this position, I knew that it was not going to be a forever job. Not just night shift, but being a staff pharmacist in general. I could not see myself just working in that role forever. I really did enjoy it for a lot of the time that I was there, at least the work that I was doing. I did not like night shift. Night shift was horrible to my body. My body did not handle the flipping your days and nights back and forth. It just wasn't for me. But at least the clinical work that I was doing, I did enjoy. I liked doing the dosing service at night and taking care of those patients. I liked being able to do code response, even though that was not something I loved in residency, I knew that it was something I could do well and be helpful with because I'd seen a lot of codes. So while that wasn't my favorite thing, I knew I was really helpful and the physicians appreciated me being there, which was a awesome testament to pharmacy services at night, I believe. So I was able to do that. I was able to work with providers for women's health patients, those that were pregnant or postpartum and help with those infections and antibiotic recommendations. And I was also able to teach and take students. So there was a lot of really great things that came out of that job that I was enjoying. But again, I knew it wasn't going to be something that was my forever position. Almost two years into the job, the investigational drug service pharmacist position opened And because of the pandemic, I had been given the opportunity to do a rotation in the investigational drug service. That was not normally a PGY-1 opportunity at my residency site. However, I was supposed to be in the cystic fibrosis clinic when the pandemic hit and they weren't taking clinic patients. So we made a last minute switch and I had requested to do investigational drug service because I was interested in it after my oncology rotation where I was seeing several of my patients that were on clinical trials. So grateful that the IDS pharmacist decided to take me under their wing for that month. I learned a lot about investigational drug service. And as you do residency or do things as a student, I hope you're kind of keeping in your mind at the end of a rotation, like, would I be interested in doing this job if one became available? Investigational drug service was one of the areas that was on my list of things that I was interested in. Med safety was on there. NICU position was on there, a pediatric like decentralized position was on there, and then investigational drug service. There were a lot of reasons for this. I liked research. I liked being on the cutting edge of things. I really enjoyed the fact it was more project-based. There was some problem solving and advocacy to do for your subjects or patients. And so all of those things made it a good fit for me. And there are other things too, and I can probably talk about that in another video. But ultimately, when I saw that, it wasn't my main goal to be an IDS pharmacist, but it was one of those positions that I thought I could see myself in. So I took my shot and I got it. So all of that is a long-winded way to say, I am now in a position that was never my goal. I was never wanting to be an investigational drug service pharmacist in pharmacy school. In fact, I didn't even know what that position was. And even whenever I graduated pharmacy school and residency, it wasn't my primary goal to take a role in investigational drug service. However, it was something that did really interest me. And when it came up, I thought it was a better use of my best skills and my interest than the position I was in at the time. 
So if you're somewhere along your pharmacy journey and you are worried about your career turning out the way you want it to, chances are it won't. Now, there are still plenty of people who reach their goals and do what they want to and don't fall into the position that I did where I ended up on a crazy path of twists and turns that I never expected. But there are also plenty of other people who are just like me in their career and could tell you that just because you don't end up where you think you are doesn't mean you don't end up where you're supposed to be. Sometimes life is going to throw you a curveball and that is exactly what you need at that time. You don't realize it then. Like when I ended up taking the investigational drug service rotation instead of the cystic fibrosis clinic, I didn't expect it to be the job that I was going to take a couple years down the line out of residency, but here I am. Sometimes the things that you plan for or think that you want completely change and you end up in something better for you or completely different that you never thought even existed. So if you're stuck in the middle of that journey right now and you're like, things are not going my way, they might actually be going your way, you just don't realize it yet. If you're also somebody who's very narrow-minded about your path, I am going to challenge you to open your mind to other opportunities. Because while you think you may really want something, give other things a chance because you may find something that is much better for you that you haven't experienced yet. And by keeping that open mind, if you do decide to go down the same path, Path, you're going to know that it's really right for you because you gave everything else a fair chance at changing your mind. I hope this episode makes you feel a little bit more comfortable about the twists and turns that are going to happen in your career. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep on living your happy farm life. Bye. Bye.